Church on this first Sunday of September. For announcements this morning, I want to lift up that our offering today is going toward our salary offering. And on Tuesday, I will have a Zoom meeting with my worship planning team for our joint annual meeting, which is coming up at the end of September. So you're going to get rid of all those announcements here pretty soon. Wednesday, I'll be at Apple Valley and Faith Home for their worship services. I switched with Martha Chancellor from the United Methodists. She'll take one of my meetings, or one of my worships in October, I think. And then if you're out and about, just so you know, Osage is having their garage sales on Friday and Saturday this weekend. Um, if you drive by the house and notice that I have my garage open with a garage sale, I am not moving. <laughs> People like to make those rumors that if the pastor has a garage sale, they're moving. I am not moving. I'm just having a garage sale. Um, <clears throat> also on Sunday, next Sunday, uh, at 5 o'clock, we have our city park back-to-school picnic at the North Shelter House. It's been reserved. Uh, that's the one closest to the splash pad. If you would bring a dish to share, that would be wonderful. And then... That's the South Shelter. No, it's the North Shelter. Splash pad and so. But it's the one closest to the splash pad. Okay, okay. Yep. 
on Friday next next Friday, right? No, this coming Friday. Next Friday, the thirteenth, Friday the thirteenth. You're having a kitchen cleaning and organization party at ten a.m. and uh, help is appreciated and lunch will be served. And then the following next Sunday or the following Sunday the fifteenth. Uh, Visitation Catholic Church at Stacyville is having their hot beef sandwich supper, free will donation from four to six. Oh my. The 18th, Susie went very far into the calendar. On the 18th, there's a joint meeting of the uh, leadership team and the session here at Eden at six o'clock. And then on the 23rd, we are having, um, we're not calling it book circle. We're have, well, it's calling it circle, women's circle. Here we go at Leah's house on the 23rd at 6.30 with a meal provided. All women are available and let Leah know that you are coming. Are there other announcements to lift up? That's like the whole month of September. Now if you remember all of that, I will be impressed. You want me to go back? You want me to go back? It's in your book. It's in your book. <laughs> and in the newsletter. And email, if you had email. If you had email, that's right. <laughs> Any other announcements to lift up this morning? Then let us turn our attention to why we are here to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And for all who are able, we please stand in body or in spirit and join me in our call to worship. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest. For now the winter is past, though flowers appear on the earth. Sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. The time of singing has come. The voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. Join with all nature in manifold witness. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. To thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Let us worship God. Amen. Now let us turn to our opening hymn, which is 517 in the red hymnal, The Solid Rock.
everlasting, for God's grace never changes. Therefore, we come together to confess our sin, trusting that in Christ we have already been forgiven. And let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that our words and actions do not always line up. We are quick to confess our faith, but slow to live it. We sing praise to your name, but we pass by orphans and widows on the other side of the street. Change us, O oh God, by your grace transform us. Root out the selfishness that hardens our hearts and replace it with compassion and generosity. Empower us by your Spirit that we might be doers of your word and not hearers only. All this we pray in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Our God has given us the perfect gift of forgiveness, Jesus Christ our Lord, who has liberated us from dead tradition and made us new by the living word, filling our hearts with God's love. Amen. Peace with you too. Thank you. Good morning. Peace be with you. So skipping over the children's time because you'll hear a little bit about it in the sermon today, but I was talking about how the disciples were working in the fields and they got hungry and they took grain off of the wheat and they ate it and the Pharisees got angry at Jesus because they didn't wash their hands. And so we're going to hear more about that, but let's listen to actually our Old Testament reading from Deuteronomy chapter 4 verses 1 to 2 and verses 6 to 10 and then jumping to James the brother of Jesus in chapter 1 verses 17 to 27 
So now, Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinance that I am teaching you to observe, so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. You must neither add anything to what I command you, nor take away anything from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God, with which I am charging you. And verse 6, you must observe them diligently, for this will show your wisdom and discernment to the peoples, who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wide and discerning people. For what other great nation has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call to him? And what other great nation, his statutes and ordinances, as just as this entire law that I am setting before you today? But take care and watch yourselves closely, so as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen, nor to let them slip from your mind all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children, how you once stood before the Lord your God at Horeb, when the Lord said to me, Assemble the people for me, and I will let them hear my words, so that they may learn to fear me as long as they live on the earth, and you may teach their children. And turning to James, chapter 1, verses 17 to 27. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of... of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourself of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in the mirror. For they look at themselves and on going away immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty and preserve, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God, the Father, is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. And let us pray. Holy and loving Spirit, you are with us today, abiding within our hearts and our minds, opening our ears to hear the message you have for us today. And you are so grateful to be among your leaders and your teachers, but also your listeners and your students. Help us be mindful of your presence. And I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations upon all of our hearts are acceptable unto you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So last week in my sermon, I said something to the fact that when we abide in Jesus and when we are with other Christians who abide in Jesus, there's no rules or creeds or bylaws that we tend to follow because we're with Jesus. We don't have to worry about this particular uh, rule or this particular um, piece of our <coughs> denomination. And yet there are rules that are unspoken that we have to adhere to. Rules like laws that have been established for keeping peace on the road and at home. 
And there are so many things that we're supposed to remember every single day, but how many of us really remember all the simple things like don't talk with your mouth full? How many have not done that lately? And how many of us really do wash our hands after we use the bathroom? I hope so, but. <laughs> how many of us say please and thank you all the time? And do we remember the Ten Commandments every time in our life? Or when you were a student, don't run through the hallways. Yeah. Keep your hands to yourself. Be sure to tie your shoes so you don't trip. Don't speed through town or anywhere else on the highway. How many adhere to that law? And when it says stop, stop. And I can keep going. There's so many other unwritten rules that we have been taught. It's no wonder that we forget our manners at times or just go off on our own because we don't want to mess with it. The biggest one at church camp was no elbows on the table. You know how hard that is when you live by yourself and you always eat with your elbows on the table? Yeah. <clears throat> So it's not too difficult to follow those road signs because they're right there in front of you unless you completely miss them. And yet, those unspoken rules that we have learned as children are sometimes just one of those petty things that maybe somebody will remind us and we're like, yeah, I was taught that, but I forgot. <laughs> and yet it keeps us together. And it brings people together that have good hearts and respect and good manners. The Reverend David Chadwell posted an interesting question a few years back when he asked this question about three different groups of people. So which would you prefer as your next door neighbor? A person of excellent habits or a person with a good heart? How about a good friend? Same question, a person with excellent habits or a person with a good heart? And then he asked about your husband or wife, a person of excellent habits or a person with a good heart? And then he goes to the children. Which would you prefer as your child, a, per a child with good habits or a child with a good heart? You know, it's wonderful if you had a neighbor who conscientiously cared for his or her property while respecting your property and not letting weeds grow up in your fences and all of that. And it's a wonderful to have a friend who always treats you with consideration or a husband who always is thoughtful and courteous or a wife who is always gracious in her comments and deeds. And as wonderful as those situations may sound, Compared to a neighbor or a friend or a husband or a wife or children with good hearts, there tends to be a little bit difference. Because when we discuss good behavior, we're discussing the quality of a person's self-control. They can take care of themselves, they can do all this stuff. But what if they don't have the heart like someone else? Because when we discuss that good heart, we're discussing the quality of the person, not the person's self-control of what they're doing. We're discussing who this person is. And that's what our scriptures are kind of focusing on today. You see, if Riley was here, he would have heard this scripture out of Mark chapter 7, verses 1 to 8 about the tradition of the elders. And this is what the elders do. And Riley, you need to understand that this is how it's done. And that's how the Pharisees were in Jerusalem. And they came down when they saw Jesus and they watched the disciples. And they'd always appear up here and the disciples and Jesus were always down here. And so they were looking from afar and... As it appears, the disciples sit down and they start to eat after a day's work. And the Pharisees are angry. And they immediately jump on Jesus and the disciples because they didn't wash their hands. 
and yet they were tired and they were hungry and they really did care about that rule. How many of us have been working in the field on a hot summer day bailing hay and the food comes out to you and you just grab for a sandwich and you eat it? I did as a kid. There were not many times that my hands got washed when we were bailing hay. So this washing hands ritual that happened was taught from the beginning that the Pharisees were like, well, you have to do this. And if you don't do it, you're not going to be able to eat and you're going to become unclean. And that's what Deuteronomy was talking about, those specific laws and those rituals that when we follow them, we're obedient to God and observe the statutes and ordinance that God taught. And then to be obeyed diligently and passed down from generation to generation to generation. But if you remember, Leviticus comes next. Yeah. And Leviticus has a lot of laws, over 600 of them. How do you remember all 600 laws that are in the Bible? But they were based on the fact that if they are followed, surely this would be a great nation and they would be wise and discerning people. And so we're to watch ourselves, not forget the things that we've seen and come together as this body to live and fear God. How does washing our hands fear God? And that's what the Pharisees wanted the people to understand. That Jesus wasn't sticking to the rules. He wasn't doing the traditions that he was taught by the elders. And it was a ceremonial oversight. So for you to follow Jesus' disciples, it's wrong. And the Pharisees weren't ready for Jesus' comeback. And so if you hear or read Mark, you hear him say, well, why don't you live according to the traditions of God and clean your heart? Jesus was convey conveying in this message that it isn't about these laws and rituals on the outside. It's about what's on the inside that matters. Meaning we're to live without judgment, live without anger, live without self-centeredness, wickedness, and greed. And I could go on and on that keeps us from staying in that moment of love and clean heart. Think about Lent. That's what we talk about, creating us a clean heart. You need to make a path straight for God. That's what Jesus is teaching, and that's why he was telling us to get away from this stuff. It's not the outward hand appearance. It's about what's inside. And that's what the letter of James is speaking to as well. To listen intently to the Holy Spirit and really hear what is being said for us. Even when we disagree, we need to stop ourselves and listen. To be slow to speak and slow to anger because anger does not produce God's righteousness. God isn't interested on what's going on out here. He wants what's in here. Act upon the good deeds. And it means that traditions should not stand in the way of God's command of loving our neighbor and honoring our parents. And if we think just by pouring water over those hands make us acceptable, then we need to rethink why we're here. You see... If we have all of our I's dotted and our T's crossed all the time, those are rites and rituals that are happening over and over and over. We can recite the words to the creeds. We can recite the Lord's Prayer, but is it getting inside of us? You see, religion, if it's a good religion, will come from the heart. And so when it comes to faith and life, our hearts are in it, or are our hearts in it, and not just our hands? Are we allowing God's renewing grace to work in us from deep within, or are we just surface people? 
Because God does not require these creeds and these memorizations. He requires love. For that's the ultimate rule. When we really get down to the diversity of things that separate us, what brings us back together is love. It's not our place to judge where to love them, where they're at. Bring unity back into this divided world with the love that we know from Jesus Christ. And if love is the only thing our children know from this day forward, then we've done our job. Because it's the love that connects us to God when we have a hard time settling into worship because of the distractions that might be around us. It's the love and the paying attention to why we are actually here to worship than worrying about something else that's happening. Because we're to focus on that relationship that God wants us to have, especially on a day like today when we celebrate communion to where God sent his only son to live for us and die for us. And if we believe in him, we aren't going to perish. We're going to have eternal life. And if we've experienced that type of love from our ancestors and our family members and our church family and our neighbors, we're going to show that kind of love to everyone else around us because that's the only thing we know. To love the neighbors as ourselves. And then everything else that we talk about rules and regulations, they'll fall into place however they need to fall into place. Because God did love the world. And so let us give thanks to him. Amen. And so let us turn to our hymn of response for the beauty of the earth, number 353 in the red hymnal, verses 1, 4, 5, and 6. also wrote that every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, 
with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Since God is the source of all generosity, let us be generous and return our tithes and offerings to him. Will the ushers please come forward and collect those offerings today? <coughs> sister-in-law died. This is, this sister-in-law lived in California, so I don't know her name. She'll probably be watching and be like, I told you her name. But it's either Lori, what? Corey. It is Corey. I had it right. I told someone else, they're like, that's not a female name. But Corey died, and she will be, they're having a little trouble getting her back to Iowa, but, um, they're talking about probably like September 20th at Bremer Funeral Home in Mason City. So uh, keep Irene and the family in our prayers. Are there other loved ones to be lifted up today? Pray for Maurice Johnson and his family. You said Maurice Johnson. Hey. Yeah, would you pray for my brother Jeff? He's suffering from long-term COVID. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Let us come to God in prayer. Holy and gracious God, we come to you today with knowing how you are with us, and yet. We stumble a lot. Help us to remain loving toward all who we meet in this world. Be accepting and be joyful that we are able to connect with another child of, of you. Lord, we come to you today with people upon our hearts and our minds that are in need of your healing. We ask and continue to pray healing upon Allison Schutte with her breast cancer and her journey that she's on. Pray for her doctors and staff that are working with her. Lord, we continue to pray for Allison Baltus and pray for her to continue to get better with her 
belly rubin numbers and her pneumonia. Lord, we also pray for Karen Smith and her family and her friends, Lord. We pray that she's doing okay and getting stronger each day. And Lord, we pray for Irene and the family with the death of another family member. And we pray for a transition of bringing Corey home to rest, to make that an easy one, Lord, for them. And so help the people that are needing to make this happen, help make it happen, Lord. And Lord, we pray for Jeff, Dean's brother, who is with long COVID and pray, Lord, that he is able to feel your healing spirit of strength and recovery, fill his body and help him get stronger each and every day. And Lord, we pray for Maurice Johnson's family and family and pray for his needs and pray for whatever it is that he is needing your spirit for, whether it's healing or if it's um, strength of mind or strength of physical ability. Because Lord, we all go through something sometimes that is just undefined. And we just ask for your healing spirit to be upon us. For all of those who are suffering today with a mental illness or a physical disability, Lord, we pray for you to be with them, to help them reach out and ask for help, to let them know that they're not alone in this world, Lord, to have someone to talk to and to be, to be a friend. For Lord, with knowing how COVID put us in isolations, I'm hearing more and more of those taking their own life because of depression. And we just pray, Lord, for a glimmer of light and a glimmer of hope for those people who are so down and so alone. Enter them, Lord. And we continue to pray, Lord, for our men and women of the military and our veterans. We thank them for our freedoms that we have and sometimes also take those for granted because there are many people that don't have what we have. And so help us to remain thankful and humble in their sight and in your sight, Lord. And even with all these concerns in our hearts and our minds, we know that in the joyous times of life, Lord, you are there. You are always with us. And we so thank you for being at our birthday celebrations, our anniversaries, our Labor Day gatherings where people may be this weekend. And we ask for safety upon everyone who is traveling on the roads or by plane or train. Keep them all safe, Lord. Because without your son, Jesus Christ, we have no hope. And with him, there is so much hope and so much joy. For we can look towards that eternal and everlasting life. Because he came here. He knows what it's like. And he walked with us. And yet he died for us as well giving us that forgiveness from the cross. And so we come to you, Lord, praying that prayer he did teach us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us turn to our communion hymn, which is number 822. Jesus, remember me, and we'll repeat it two times. <laughs> Thank you. 
the Christ and seek to follow Christ's way. Come to this sacred table not because you must, but because you may. Come not because you are fulfilled, but because in your emptiness you stand in need of God's mercy and assurance. Come not to express an opinion, but to seek a presence and to pray for a spirit. Come to this table as you are. Partake and share. It is spread for all that we might again know God has come to us, shared our common lot, and invited us to join the people of God's new age. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a joyous thing to lift our hearts and hands to you, God of light and love, in thanksgiving for your gift of grace. Before we knew the unsearchable riches of your child, Jesus, we walked in shadows and under clouds. But now, as you reveal radiance to the world, we join the hymn sung in glory without end. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the life and love of Christ, that we may be for the world disciples of Christ, redeemed by your love and fed by your grace. Awaken us with your spirit, that we may be one with Christ, one with each other, and one in the ministry to the world. Shine upon our lives, O Lord, that we may proclaim your love, feed the hungry, and show compassion to all until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at your heavenly banquet. Jesus Christ, together with the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forevermore. Amen. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he gave thanks to God and he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body broken for you. Eat this and do this in remembrance of me. In the like manner, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant poured out in my blood. As often as you drink of it, do it in remembrance of me. For these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for all is ready. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ broken for you.
Take and drink. This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you. And now, if you are able, will you please stand and join me in our prayer of thanksgiving? We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of your Son, Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please remain standing and join in our closing hymn, Great is Your Faithfulness, number 60. We go forth to live the gospel in the world. We are asked to go to feed and clothe and tend and pray, speaking God's love to those who have forgotten it. And may we go and offer our whole selves to God and to one another. Go in the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
be there to jump and walk in the morning. Daisy and I walk on he doesn't live there. Okay. He always had that.